I see you guys did not care about my spoiler-free review. So, let's get this favorite scenes list going then. This new installment takes place in a very different spot versus the previous movies. Now, Army of Darkness was the first one to leave the cabins. But Evil Dead Rise is the first one to take the Deadites to the city. Specifically, inside of a high-rise apartment building. There are so many new weapons that are used in this movie, such as household appliances like the infamous cheese grater. We will get to my thoughts on the cheese grater later on when we get to that scene. We also have elevators, stairways, air vents, and then of course we've got... Stephanie. We didn't get any of this stuff in the prior movies, so it was intriguing. The only household appliance we got was in the 2013 version when we got the, the slicer. Yeah, that was a fun scene. Also, this would probably be a good time to bring up, I did do my favorite scenes list of every other Evil Dead movie, if you guys want to go check those videos out. Besides the location, it's not the only thing that was different in this movie. We now are centered around a family, not like brother and sister, like the original Evil Dead from the 80s and the Evil Dead movie from 2013. No, no, no. We got a whole family. We got the mama, we got the three kids, and then we got Auntie. And now that we have a family, there's a lot more emotional connections between each of the characters when it comes to one of those family members becoming a Deadite. Speaking of Deadite Mommy, we're matching hair colors. Redheads unite. Unnatural redheads, all right? I'm, I'm very aware that I'm not a natural redhead, but neither is Deadite Mommy, okay? Back to the family stuff. I like that we don't have a significant other like we did in the previous movies because then we can focus more on the family dynamic. It helps us, the audience, feel more remorse for these characters. And since I already mentioned it, we get the mother turning into a Deadite, not the sister like we're used to in the previous movies, which is a lot more painful. In the words of Eric Draven, Mother is the name for God on the lips and hearts of all children. You turn someone so nurturing and so protective and um, motherly into one of these nasty, evil Deadites. Now in the beginning, we start off in the cabin in the woods, which I believe is supposed to be a misdirect if you haven't seen the trailer, but I saw it, so I wasn't misdirected. We have these two girls who seem to be like best friends and then this dude who's basically just a meathead who's dating one of the girls. One of the girls is clearly infected. You can tell whenever the other girl comes in to check on her. And then the girl laying in the bed clearly has deadeyeism. Yeah, I'm bringing that word back. Once the friend sits in the chair and starts reading her book is when my first favorite scene comes to play. child's face looking through the window. I pulled its wrist onto the broken pane. Jess? Let me out! Oh my goodness, I got chills. I love this part. I also loved how her voice changes. Ooh. It reminds me of the very first movie when Cheryl starts predicting the cards that Shelly and Linda were looking at. So that's why this is my favorite scene, because I can tell that this was a slight homage to that. And if it's not, then I'm just going to pretend it is. What the hell? What? You're plugged in. Oh my god. Ugh. Stupid laptop died. Thought it was plugged in, and it wasn't. After Bed Dead Eye Girl destroys the other girl's head, and then destroys her now ex-boyfriend, we get the best title screen that this franchise has ever gotten in any movie ever. I feel like this is the best title screen I have ever witnessed just in general from every movie I've ever seen. So the movie jumps backwards and it says one day prior to the events we just saw in the opening. And then it opens to a pregnant Beth 
So we're at the part where the movie has the audience get to know the three kids. Bridget, I believe. Cassie. Uh, what's the son's name? Danny. Danny boy. Then we get to know the mother, Ellie. Or Mommy Maggot. Or Maggot Mommy. I am sorry. I'm so sorry. And then, of course, our pregnant auntie is Beth. So there you go. We got our main cast of the rest of the movie. Now, during this scene, while we're getting to know the kids and the mom, we also get a glimpse of their neighbors, two kids that live next door to them. And this is where my second favorite scene comes to play. I'm watching all the Freddy movies in a row. Even the shitty ones. There aren't any shitty ones. Oh my goodness, it's the dialogue for me, because when it comes to the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, there are two audiences. One side loves all the movies or specific ones, and then the other side is like, the first one's the only good one. So that was just a great commentary. Skipping to dinner, Beth gives out presents, right? And she points out that she got a gift for their dad, and this is where we find out that the kid's dad left them. Ellie tells the three kids, hey, feed it, so that she can tell Beth the story or whatever. When the kids come back, the earthquake happens. Before we move on, slight nitpick. I know, I gotta point it out though. Now, during the scene where we were learning about the kids and Ellie and all of that, what was with all of the obvious weapons? Like, the movie kept on zooming in on specific items throughout the house, like, Hey, look, potential weapon. Oh, look, another potential weapon. And I'm like, okay, can we just move on, please? Anyways, Danny finds the Necronomicon underneath the building after the earthquake happens. Um, there's a bank under there, too. <sighs> what? Another nitpick, though. Why is there a bank under this building? And then if the Necronomicon wanted to get found and it caused the earthquake, because we know it caused the earthquake. It's pretty obvious that it did. Why didn't it cause the earthquake earlier on? Like, why, why now? The Necronomicon is like, Oh, I'm gonna an earthquake right now, because I know these kids specifically are gonna come look for me. You know what I would have liked? If we found the Necronomicon, like, in an attic or something, or just, I don't know, like, maybe the earthquake can still happen, and then the Necronomicon was, like, in the crack of the wall inside their apartment. That would make more sense. Why is there a bank under the building? I don't understand, I don't understand that. It's a stretch. Also, why is there a wood chipper in the garage? Is that normal? Do, do most parking garages have wood chippers? Kids make it back to the apartment, and Danny decides to look at the book, and then Bridget's like, oh, I don't like that. The book is giving me weird vibes. And Danny's like, all right, let's not touch it. And then he decides, oh, I'm going to listen to the records instead, because, you know, Danny's a DJ person, a record-playing person, coincidentally, right? Because we needed a character who could use the record. But this is where my third favorite scene comes to play. And what's so cool about this scene is that they use the same words from the previous movies. And what I found interesting is that it wasn't the professor reading them this time, it was a priest, who is also voiced by Bruce Campbell, by the way, if you didn't know. But I also was confused because it's like, wouldn't a priest know not to read these words because it's an evil book? But you know what? We're going to continue overlooking these um, nitpicks, all right? Ellie went downstairs to do the laundry. And then, of course, this is where my fourth scene comes to play. Come on. <laughs> my favorite part about this scene specifically is the... POV of the camera just swooshing through the door and hitting Ellie back into the elevator. Love that. And you know what I also loved? I loved how the demon is just slapping Ellie in the face. But I also really like the usage of the wires inside of the elevator um, being the vines in this movie. It's very smart. And I also like that they omitted the uncomfy scene from the previous movies. I didn't see it in this scene. It could have still happened, but I'm glad we didn't see it. Of course, the mom makes it to the apartment, but now she's infected with dead-eyedism. But my fifth favorite scene would be the very last glimpse of Ellie that we see before she turns full-on dead-eyed. It's in me. 
Don't let it take my babies. Now, I know this scene was dark to add into my favorite scenes list, but I, I liked that we got to see a glimpse of her before she turns full Deadite, because we didn't really get that in the previous movies, if you think about it. They just, they're just, that's it. They're, they're Deadite. That's it. Yeah, we got the, oh, I'm not feeling so good from Mia. We didn't really get that heart-wrenching scene like you do with Ellie before she's completely gone. And that's what I liked about it. We're going to skip ahead after everybody figured out that they're all stuck because specifically only their stairway broke down. Now we're going to skip to the part where Beth is talking to Ellie as they all believe that she died. And I mean, they're half right. And then Ellie sits up and Beth's like, oh my goodness, she's alive. She has a fever. So what do we do when we got fevers? We go take cold showers. Now we're at the bathtub scene, which is my sixth favorite scene. <laughs> Dead Eye Mommy awakens. Mommy's with the maggots now. Oh, such an iconic visual. I swear, Alyssa was made for this role. And the cracks you hear as she's just moving around in the apartment, it, it's so unsettling and so eerie. I winced a lot throughout this movie because of her character. Now we're skipping a little ahead after Beth gets stabbed through the hand. Yikes. And Bridget gets marked. And this is where my seventh favorite scene comes to play. Who wants to rot next? Eeny, meeny, Fighting. The way Deadite Mommy says, I mean. I'm playing it in my head and I'm laughing. And that's what I like to see. I like to see the small, silly mannerisms that the Deadites have because that's what they're like. The Deadites are silly and awful. They're awful, of course. I do kind of wish that they made Deadite Mommy a little bit more silly throughout the movie, but still, overall, perfect performance. Amazing new Deadite addition to the franchise. Now, we're back out into the hallway. All the neighbors are coming out, and um, they're about to be demolished. And this is where my eighth favorite scene comes to play. <laughs> this is a straight homage to Evil Dead 2, when Bobby Joe is screaming and the eyeball flies into her mouth. I don't know why a lot of people missed that. My excuse for knowing this homage was because I had seen all the movies before I went to go see this movie in theaters. And after Ellie's just out here destroying people, oof, Beth is like, okay, that's not my sister. She takes the kids, locks them in their apartment, and this is when Dead Eye Mommy's just stuck out in the hallway. Ooh. And my ninth favorite scene is while Dead Eye Mommy is in the hallway. <laughs> this actor was clearly a young child, like definitely not over 18. So I understand why they did the kill off screen. Horror has this thing where we got t children are untouchable. But I know that it chapter one definitely broke that rule for sure and they were like hey we can still do this man we can still have children in horror and not walk on eggshells i'm just gonna like pretend that the writer for this film was like i'm gonna take notes from that movie because it also is a stephen king story and stephen king is the reason why evil dead 2 was able to be a thing but i like to think that the writer took notes from Stephen King, specifically from the It movies, and that's why he incorporated children into this movie. But that's my little theory on it. I'm not out here saying, hey, let's put violence on the small humans. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is that you can still have horror with small humans and still make it a good horror movie. What do we want from horror movies? We want to be scared. Show me a scary clown biting a child's arm off. Oh, we saw that? And guess what? That movie got insanely high ratings, okay? It just proves my point. All right, Bridget brings up the book that they found, and Danny's like, all right, I gotta show Beth this book. 
And this is when Beth and Danny go to Danny's room and they leave Bridget and Cassie out in the living room, right? Remember, Bridget's marked. So Bridget, you know, she's got that mark going on her face. It's, you know, irritating her. So she's got to go to the kitchen and check this out. Now, children are very, very easily manipulated, right? Easy to manipulate. I didn't like the way I said that before. So Deadite Mommy lures little Cassie to the people. And my 10th favorite scene comes to play here. You don't look so good, Mom. Nothing a big old hug and kiss from you won't fix. Like a good girl. Ah, <laughs> oh, see, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Cassie wasn't untouchable there. And it's so sad because Cassie is just, she's a little girl. She doesn't know what's going on with her mom. It was a great depiction of children in horror. Like, they don't know what's going on. Oh my gosh. And the usage of peepholes in this movie was a great addition to the cinematography. All right, the door is shut and locked. And then my next favorite scene, my 11th favorite scene, comes to play here. What are you looking at? I gotta kill the creepy crawlers that I got inside my tongue. When it is revealed that Bridget is now a deadite, I wasn't expecting this. I really wasn't. I didn't think that they would let the kids become deadites. But when I saw Bridget turn, I was like, oh, they're really going there. We're really turning these teenagers into deadites. Okay, okay, here we go. We have never gotten a deadite child before ever and it just made me love this movie even more it made me applaud it even more i was like yes step over these lines and when i thought about this it reminded me of the last of us because in the video games there are no children clickers no children walkers before they turn into a clicker whatever they're called but in the show they had one clicker child in one of the episodes and everybody was just shocked they're like oh my goodness a child clicker what and she was wearing a Blue's Clues shirt, which made it even worse. That's what this scene reminded me of. When I saw Bridget turn into a deadite, I was just like, oh my goodness, that is just sinister. All right, I said we were going to talk about the cheese grater scene, right? It was not that bad. It was not that. Don't. <laughs> it was not that bad. I was expecting way more from the cheese grater scene with the way people were hyping it up. And then I saw the scene and I'm like, you're kidding me, right? We saw Beth get her hand stabbed all the way through. We saw Ellie with a freaking tattoo needle almost hit Bridget's face. That made me wince so much more than the cheese grater. Later on, Ellie gets stabbed through the nose with scissors, through the nostrils, like straight into her head. You're telling me the cheese grater scene is worse than that? Absolutely not. But I mean, hey, if it worked for you, cool. 12th favorite scene comes to play after the cheese grater scene. Oh my goodness. The, the trauma that Cassie must have endured from this scene alone. There's no amount of therapy that this child can receive to cure the fact that she straight up stabbed her sister straight through the mouth, through her head with Stephanie. And see, this just proves my point. This scene was way more gorier than the cheese grater scene. Freaking yeah. Also, the cinematography after Bridget gets stabbed in the mouth was so pretty for some reason, like with the fairy lights behind Bridget and just her standing there like, that, it just, it looked cool. That was weird. I should not have ever made that pose. Also, I didn't mention this earlier, but I like the bond that Beth and Cassie grow throughout the movie. First, we see her giving Cassie the bracelet towards the beginning, and then they have bath time. Beth's helping her with bath time. And then we get this cute little scene right here when they're talking to each other. And it's nice because it builds up their relationship and what will happen later on in the movie. Oh, and then Beth's um, career is a technician. So when Danny's DJ set is destroyed, guess who can fix it? I've got no power to run a turntable. I can fix that. So Beth decides to listen to the records while Danny and um, Cassie are chilling out in a different room. And Beth needs to put on her headphones because she doesn't want the words to be repeated out loud. And this is where my 13th favorite scene comes to play. Oh my goodness. It was amazing. Careful, 
again. <gasps> Just that eerie feeling you get when you see the characters walking towards the screen, and then there's a third figure floating in the background. You're like, ah, turn around, dude! And then Big Brother comes in to save Cassie, pushes her out of the way, accidentally injuring her, but still saving her. Yeah, that was an awesome scene. But now, Danny's infected. My 14th favorite scene comes to play here, though. It's just a nice little homage. Not a homage to a previous Evil Dead movie, but if you notice in a lot of horror movies, Scream 5, Hereditary... Those are just a few. Someone's always getting lit on fire. And me personally, every time there's like a monster or an entity or something, I'm always like, burn it. Burn it. Where are the torches? Get a flamethrower. Burn it. My 15th favorite scene comes to play here. Dismantlement. He's run. The way the camera is placed straight in front of Beth, and you see little deadite mommy crawling on the walls like a spider. Oh my goodness, it's the same exact effect that you got when Bridget was floating behind Cassie and Danny. Just great usages of horror. Gr amazing. And then when Beth sees her reflection through the window, Oh my goodness, that was relieving. All right, we're skipping past the whole fight scene with Ellie and Beth. Cassie's under the couch. She finds the scissors. Yes, yeah, she finds the scissors. And that's that's the scene I was referencing earlier when I said that Ellie gets stabbed through her nose with the scissors. Yeah, this is where that happens. And then Beth and Cassie run straight out that door. So they run through the hallway full of very, very dead neighbors. <laughs> the cinematography of this hallway was amazing. It was very eerie. I love the lights flickering. I love the usages of color. Like, if you noticed in the apartment room, apartment room, in the apartment, it's red. Like, I, I noticed that right away. It was like red and orange and just basically warm colors. Then you get to the hallway and it's straight up cool colors, like straight up dark blues, blacks. And I just, I love the contrast and colors throughout this movie. Beth gets a hold of... Boom Boom Stick Remington, not the exact one, but still. Beth and Cassie make it to the elevator. Guess what was stopping the elevator from closing? Keys. All right, we pick up the keys. Door closes, elevator works. Weird. Now this is the part where I thought I would kind of like point out another nitpick. So the elevator fills with blood, cool scenery, but I I'm confused. So the continuity, Continuity. Are you kidding me, Isa? The continuity is that whenever a person's open wound or inside their mouth is filled or touched by bodily fluids of a deadite, they too become infected. So we know that Cassie and Beth have been injured and they have open wounds. How come the blood that's filling up in the elevator doesn't infect them? Whose blood is that? Is that not the Deadite's blood? My 16th favorite scene, I think you guys know what it is. I, I'm, it's right after the elevator scene. We know what the 16th favorite scene is. I mean, come on. Iconic. And there's a lot of people who are like, why are we referencing The Shining? What is the connection? Guys, Stephen King is the reason Evil Dead 2 got its budget and the rest of the franchise got to continue. It's like a little thank you to Stephen King for helping this franchise continue. So that's the connection. That's why The Shining is referenced in this movie. Now we're at the parking garage. Remember the wood chipper? My 17th favorite scene. I love that we got to see a new deadite element in this franchise the mutated deadites excuse me that was amazing it was horrific my 18th favorite scene which is where all the cute little moments of beth and cassie lead up to Go ahead, baby girl. <laughs> 
Come get some. That's why we had to plant those scenes throughout the movie. We had to get Mama Bear Beth to come save Cassie. I'm pretty sure she still would have went full on Mama Bear, even without us seeing those cutesy scenes. I mean, that's her niece. But still, it, it made those scenes a lot better. And then with the with the deadite blob, with the deadite blob getting all up close to Cassie and almost unaliving her, another homage of innocence being close to danger. Oh, and we get the chainsaw and boomstick Remington just laying on the ground for Beth to pick from. What's she gonna pick? My 19th favorite scene will show ya. I'm glad no one had to lose a hand in this movie though. Oh, and the conveniently placed wood chipper. Yeah, that came into play for sure. Oh, and then like Beth brings the chainsaw with her as her and Cassie walk out. Why? It's a cute little homage, but but why? Oh, and then we had to bring it back to full circle with the opening. So we see one of the girls that ends up at the cabin lived on the floor below the children and Ellie. Honestly, if it wasn't for that title screen, I would say that the opening and the ending scenes are just completely unnecessary in this movie. And if the witch chipper didn't destroy the evil from this Necronomicon, what is supposed to destroy it? It's fine though. This movie was buckets of fun as well as gore. It had buckets of gore. And there you have it. My 19 favorite scenes of Evil Dead Rise. Overall, amazing installment to this franchise. It definitely lived up to the other movies, in my opinion, of course. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. My next videos will be the Insidious videos. Oh, and of course, don't forget to subscribe, guys. Let's talk about our favorite scenes together. Don't forget to like this video if you liked the video and comment. Let me know what your favorite scenes are. Did I mention your favorite scenes? I may have. All right, um, I gotta end this video. We are done. Bye, 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 bye.